Hall meeting accusing them of racism and disenfranchising the majority of Detroit's African American residents and more. Federal Representative Rashida Tlaib, known as one of the Gang of Four, also came out to support the attacks. Tlaib has always been strongly opposed to Trump, so she must have been working very hard at this time. Democrat Abraham Ayesh even exposed the names and schools of Palmer's children in her video. Ayesh said, <laughs> That was from one of my previous videos I made. I just thought it would be interesting. We hate lying. Don't you hate lying? Yeah, she's weird, man. But now the real racists are in charge. The real racists, like Elian Omar, she's a racist. A member of the squad, the far left socialists, she's a racist in my opinion, my humble opinion. Let me put it this way, she says racist things. I don't want to be like the opposite. I'm not going to call anybody a racist. That was wrong and I apologize. She says racist things. Let me give you an example of one thing she said. Go. I would say uh, uh, our, our country should be more fearful um, of, of, of white men across our country because they are actually um, causing uh, most of the deaths within this country. Um, and so if fear was the, the driving force of, of, of policies to keep America safe, Americans safe inside of this country, um, we should be uh, profiling, monitoring, um, and, uh, and, and creating policies to fight the radicalization of white men. She, she says we should monitor white men because white men is what is destroying this country. Heck, I don't know. I get up and look for work every day, go to work, try to make money to live on. That's all I do. Well, she gets re saved from whatever country we bought her from, and now she's got a cush job. Uh, this Omar, you know she was caught uh, buying, paying cash. There was a video out where uh, the guy was saying, showing these ballots that he had collected, ballot harvesting, and he said she was paying him cash for those ballots. So she's a liar and a cheater, and now she's in, been in Congress. This is what's happening. The socialists are getting more and more powerful, and they're trying to take over. All right, tonight we're going to look at some of the the list. So, so first we're going to look at um, some of the uh, population and vote discrepancies in several states. A lot of places, there were way more votes than there was the population. This stuff is all true. All true. What would you call it? What would you call it? When they have six, when they have 301,048 people in the city, and 691,443 vote. Wisconsin population, 590,157 votes, 640,758. Detroit, Michigan population, 672,662 votes. 850,441. Lansing, Michigan, 118,000, and they had 156,000 votes. All right. So in Wisconsin recently, they just found 150,000 bad votes. Yep. Yeah. It's so funny. This is what's going on. I think what's really going on is the... Uh, I'll put it up right in a minute. He did a video about mm, about 
They were the globalists who want to take over. This has been going on for a long time. I'm going to do another video on just that. Because this goes back 200 years. Uh, it started with the Fabian Society, and it's still going on. And they've been trying to take our country from us for a long time. But now they're on the verge of doing it. Doing it. And what, what you don't understand is that people who support Biden just because they hate Trump are helping these globalists and these socialists take over our country. And before too long, you won't have no guns. You won't own your house. They're going to take everything. They're going to take everything and put everybody on a... That's what they want to do. The other day I saw on CNN and I saw the five levels of grief that Trumpsters are going through right now. <laughs> There are a few that are a little bit higher, but it's between 10 and 20 percent the voter turnout right. based on registered voters in these Detroit precincts. OK, so that's pretty low. Um, and you notice here, by the way, the AV, meaning uh, um, the, we're talking about the absentee ballots, that uh, some of these weren't counted. So these are the in-day election turnouts, just to be clear. Right. I want to be clear about this because now I'm going to go through the surrounding, not counties, but municipalities in Detroit. Because we know Detroit would be where it's most liberal. Wayne County, right, though, absolutely. a lot of people don't realize, Wayne County encompasses a lot of places like Gross Point, yeah, like Livonia, Canton, some very suburban. there, And we have the turnout rate. Oh, and we have total turnout rate, 84%. 84%, 82, 82, 82, 75 is the lowest we see there. 83, even if you look at the in-day voting percentage, they're all between 25, most of them between 25 and 30%. Some of them are absentee ballots, but you see a higher voting percentage by quite a significant margin, right? 80% here, 73. Uh, now look, let me do this. I'm going to continue scrolling through here. So, because these are all part of Wayne County and then something's going to surprise you because we thought we were done with Detroit, right? Right. All right. Let's go down to Livonia. Very white. <laughs> very Livonia. White. We have 79%. 80 we can keep on going down here. Plymouth is very white. They have a great haunted house. Erebus, 85%. So these numbers are consistent. No, that's Pontiac. Oh, that's Pontiac. Yeah, that's Plymouth right. is a little hoity-toity. Oh, is it? Fancy that's right. Plymouth. So either way, Plymouth is uh, not, not exactly mixed. Now, no. I say this because <laughs> this is also important. Donald yeah. Trump did more. Right, with minority voters than any other Republican in modern history. He did better than he did in 2016. So that's important to keep in mind that even with these precincts in Detroit that might have 15% total voter turnout. That's our trash. The Plymouth actually up. had a both. soccer mom's uh, defund the police rally oh. in, the, in the town center right by like the tiny theater and gazebos and stuff. It was quite hilarious because they needed the police <laughs> to watch them. And it was all white soccer moms and Lululemon <laughs> <laughs> what, what am I gonna? What am I gonna do? Have have the lady in the Fabletics monitor? She can't throw a punch. My my dog's therapist would be pretty good at this job. <laughs> right there, eighty percent average turning up to vote. We know that that's obviously heavily Trump. But then we get to the bottom here, and all of a sudden Detroit comes back. But huh. do you notice something? Zero registered voters, and a as far as percent of vote turnout. Zero registered voters, and by the way, these are much bigger than the precincts before, 2,500 votes, 1,900 votes, 2,100 votes. Some of these are up to like 3,000 votes, 3,400 votes, 3,300 votes, 2,100 votes, 2,300 votes, 2,900 votes, with zero registered voters and the percent of voter turnout. This, by the way, these numbers here that have zero registered voters, no data whatsoever that you could match against, let's say if you were doing some kind of canvassing, if you were doing some kind of actual recount, there'd be no way to actually check because there are zero registered voters in the books. This totals up to around 173,000 voters. Again, look God's more important than anything else right now, especially right now. Um, but they also say there's no evidence and that there's no fraud. And that is just simply not true. So this is the best evidence that the media is lying to you. The media are almost literally exploding with bullshit. So this is what you should be really upset about is that you're being lied to. The media are made up of equal parts, advertising, politics, business, public relations and show business. These people are sitting right at bullshit junction. Now, normally, you don't like people to lie to you, do you? Do you like it when someone lies to you? No. No one likes it. But they're lying to you. But they're lying to you. And they do it by exploiting your fears and insecurities. So, get mad at them. So 
anyway, Arizona called the state early. That was weird. That was weird. Uh, an affidavit by penalty of perjury that if it's a lie, prosecuted. A lot of people, like over 200 affidavits in Pennsylvania alone. So let's look at some of the irregular things. Uh, birthdays were changed to 1900. Or it wasn't filled out. So they had to change the birthdays. And what they did was they put in 1900. And they were all the same every time they had to do it. Um, the mail-in uh, mail ballots were had the wrong name on them. So they filled those in. The poll watchers and poll, poll, poll workers, poll watchers. And the media, no evidence, substantiated claims of fraud. This was a coup d'etat. They won and they won. The poll watchers weren't allowed to watch. But they're called poll watchers. They watch. watched poll workers duplicate ballots. They sat there and watched him do it. There's people who swear by that. Are they lying? I don't know. Why would they lie? And so they would stand there and they said they would run the same ballot through like twice, sometimes up to five times. Dead people voted. Not only that, dead people had to register to vote. Bullshit. So first the dead people registered, then they climbed up out of the grave and came and actually voted. Bullshit. Of course they did it by mail. Bullshit. Piles. Bullshit. Piles of unopened envelopes that were rejected because they weren't registered. They were counted as votes. It had the same signature. 60% of these envelopes had the same exact signature. Now there's one thing you might have noticed I don't complain about. Politicians. Windows were covered. Why would you cover the windows? They don't pass through a membrane from another reality. They were covered with uh, cardboard, wallpaper, and wood. <laughs> Maybe next year they'll bring blankets for two years from now. Could buy some blinds. A thousand people showed up and said, you already voted. <laughs> You voted. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Zero. Nope. And I don't take very seriously the media or the press in this country, who in the case of the Persian Gulf War were nothing more than unpaid employees of the Department of Defense, and who most of the time, most of the time, function as kind of an unofficial public relations agency for the United States government. Okay, in Pennsylvania, 1.8 million ballots were sent out, and 2.5 million ballots came back. Some of them, like almost a million of them, came back the same day, so they weren't even mailed out, really. <laughs> York Times, it shows that at 3.42 a.m. on election night, Trump's 51% share of the vote, which he once held, suddenly dropped, while Biden's share of the vote soared by 2%. On the other hand... <laughs> These people, they didn't even care if they were caught. At three something in the morning, a 600,000 vote spike phew, is on the data. Our votes go out of the country before before they're tallied. Why do we send our votes to a, a computer in Germany or Spain? I don't believe anything the government tells me. That don't make sense. Governor in P Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania, the governor in Pennsylvania ordered those machines to be used even though they had already been rejected. Why does every mistake Why is every mistake helping Biden? Why is that? If there are mistakes, wouldn't some of them help Trump? Trump? There isn't one, not one mistake. The state legislators are the one who
who, who appoint the electors. They delegate the power to the state to run the election, and they're responsible. If they can't certify the vote by December the 14th, then it goes to the House of Representatives. The concrete principle of the separation of powers between the Constitution and state Constitution is uh, that so that no one can have full control of the of the uh, the voting system. <laughs>
Bullshit is everywhere. Bullshit is rampant. Parents are full of shit. Teachers are full of shit. Clergymen are full of shit. Law enforcement people are full of shit. The entire country is completely full of shit. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.